Good morning. So I'm going to invite us all to simply take that breath together all the way in, all the way out, coming together in consciousness as if we were actually in the same room together. And now I'm going to invite you to sink deeply into your bones, maybe the bones of your spine, that part behind your heart, and let your breath expand all the way throughout your spine to the base of your neck, down each vertebrae, into that triangle bone at the base of your spine. And take a breath with that triangle bone, that sacrum. An interesting little thing, our bones are actually very, very porous. If they were solid, we would all weigh about 800 pounds but we don't. So there is room in our bones to breathe and bring breath in. And notice the breath moving into the bones of your thigh and the bones of your hips. And notice the breath moving into the bones of your knees bones of your calves, the bones of your feet, the bones of your toes, and notice the breath moving into the bones of your shoulders and your shoulder blades. And notice the breath moving into the bones of your arms. and your forearms, and your wrists, and your hands, and your fingers. And notice the breath moving into your rib cage. And notice the breath moving up into your jaw the bones of your face, the bones of your skull. And take the breath from the very bone marrow, the center of your bones, to all of your skin, top to bottom, front to back, and side to side, connecting all cells, all neighborhoods of your body right here and right now in that oneness that we truly are. And so this week our topic is the fire of anger. This month the topic is the emotions. And what I know is that when we do not actually deal with our emotions in a healthy way, they do get stuck in our body and create havoc. And I also know that the divine, the sacred is right here in every moment. For our bones are here to support us in every moment. Our bones offer the gifts of clarity and wisdom, steadiness. And so now I invite you to put your attention back on that triangle bone, that sacrum that shares the same root word of sacred. We have sacred 
right here in our body. Taking a couple, three deep breaths all the way in, all the way out with your attention on your sacrum, on the sacred within you. Simply notice how would you describe your sacrum right now? Maybe you notice there's a back to the sacrum and a front to the sacrum and a top and a bottom and two sides. Notice right now if they're all the same temperature. without trying to change anything or shift anything. Notice, do they feel like similar pieces of a whole? Do they feel separate or fractured? What does your sacrum feel like right now? Notice that part of mine feels hot and red and inflamed. And part of mine feels sort of gray and flat. I also notice that the front of my sacrum feels like cool blue water. that reminds me that that sacred is right here. What do you notice about your sacrum right now? All the pieces and parts of it. So if you notice that there's a piece, a piece, or a part of your sacrum that feels like it could use a little attention, a little love, a little reminder that it truly is sacred and divine, if there's a part of your sacrum that you noticed, felt like it knew its sacredness and its divinity. Can you let that part of your sacrum offer support to the part of your sacrum that maybe doesn't remember its own divinity? For me, when I ask that, I notice that the blue and the calmness and the water feels like it's moving over the parts that feel inflamed, cooling, soothing, bringing into a greater sense of balance. Simply by breathing, remembering, and offering and asking for support. several minutes, I invite you to simply be with your sacrum, all the parts of it, 
if another part of it comes up. Invite the descriptor words to be physical descriptor words. Hot, inflamed, cool, purple, buzzing, solid, boggy. And invite your sacrum along with your breath. To simply receive support. This next breath, I invite you to tell your sacrum, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for accepting these changes with grace and ease. Thank you, sacrum, for sharing your wisdom and being on this journey with me. Thank you for being that place that when I think of you, I remember sacrum and sacred come from the same root. And so we take the breath together, top to bottom, front to back, side to side, from the bone marrow to your skin. Coming back easily, gently, gracefully to this time and this place and this knowing, right here and right now, at current local present time, knowing that we get to move into the world, remembering the resources to process our emotions in healthy, and sacred ways. Thank you for joining me. Namaste. Vegas. 
CSL Greater Las Vegas, it is our mission to inspire spiritual discovery through community connection, exploration, and celebration. Before we begin this celebration service, let's all join in and sing our opening song together. moment right here and right now, knowing that we are all the energy of God. I'm Kelly Capsar, a licensed practitioner here at Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas, and it is my pleasure to be here with you as we experience this uplifting celebration service together. Throughout this service, if you feel a need for prayer, a prayer and a blessing for you, a family member, or a friend, then please go to our website and select our prayer request. Know that licensed spiritual practitioners are deeply committed to supporting you through prayer. We are here for you. Please feel free to call on us. As a matter of fact, even as I speak, two practitioners are providing spiritual support right now for you, for me, for our entire community. They are holding us in deep spiritual loving care from their homes by sitting in meditation during this service. We thank Merlon Hart and Christine Page for holding High Watch for each one of us today. And now, let us take a moment to consider this week's affirmation. You may wish to jot it down or take a picture of it and keep it with you as a source of inspiration throughout the week. I'll read the affirmation and then we'll enter into contemplation together after which I will give the invocation. At the center of anger is peace and calm. At the center of anger is peace and calm. Fill me, God, be Thou my grace. Fill me, God, be Thou my grace. 
Fill me, God, be thou my grace. I know God's light shines within me. I know God's light shines within me. I simply know that everything right here, right now, is the power and presence of divine. It is the power and presence of love and action. The power and presence right here, right now. And so I consciously align myself with and as that one, with and as the grace, with and as the filled up, with and as the support, with and as the love. I simply offer deep gratitude. knowing that the deep gratitude is offered, received. And so knowing this unfolds in the grace, knowing this unfolds in the love, knowing this unfolds in the complete support of anything that is said here, anything that is experienced here. I simply rest, I rest in the knowing, I rest in the grace, I rest in my bones, and I rest in the sacredness of my sacrum that is always with me. I simply let it be, knowing it truly already is, and together we say, and so it is. Fill me, God, be thou my grace. Fill me, God, be thou my grace. Fill me, God, be thou my grace. I know God's light shines within me. I know God's light shines within me. I know God's light shines within me. Okay, it's time to get your 50s groove on. Do a little dancing with me. Now I want you to sing this. It goes like this. I relax, let go, release and surrender. I relax, let go, release and surrender. I relax, let go, release and surrender. All is well. All is well, that's the whole thing. Here we go, sing with me now. I relax, let go, release and surrender. I relax, let go, release and surrender. I relax, let go, release and surrender. All is well, all is well, all is well. Affirm and pray that I'm blessed with everything I have. I release my fears because it's all so clear. I am held, I am loved, I am safe. Here we go. I relax, let go, release and surrender. I relax, let go. Release and surrender. I relax, let go. Release and surrender. All is well. I am well. I am well. And now I see what my life can be when I trust in the process and have faith. And now I when I just let go That I have all I'll ever need I relax, let go, release and Are you feeling better? I relax, let go 
go. Release and surrender. Do the movements now. I relax. Let go. Release and surrender. All is well. I am well. I am well. Do it again. I relax. Let go. Release. We're gonna do this over and over until you get it. I relax. Let go. Release and surrender. I relax. Let go. Release and surrender. All is well. I am well. Sing it again. I relax. Let go. Release and surrender. I relax. Let go. Release and surrender. I relax. Let go. Release and surrender. I am well. All is well. All is well. I am well. All is well. All is well. I am well. Do you feel better? Take a deep breath. Good morning, Greater Las Vegas Centers for Spiritual Living. My name is Reverend Veronica, and I am your guest speaker today. I am from uh, Namaste Centers for Spiritual Living in Long Beach, California, where I am a staff minister. And I wanted to thank uh, Reverend Laura Hallett for this opportunity to speak at your center. I, I feel really blessed to be able to speak at your center. And congratulations to, to Reverend Laura as well. She was an instructor while I was in ministerial school. Um, and so I definitely feel a connection with her. So thank you, Reverend Laura. Um, I wanted to start uh, with the uh, first how this all came about was that Reverend Laura sent me an email, you know, rest requesting me to speak. And she gave me some topics. And the first topic that came to me that jumped out at me was, about anger. And I thought, wow, okay, spirit, you want me to talk about anger. And so here we are, here we are to talk about something that's very important uh, to discuss. Because I think sometimes in the spiritual world, people don't want to show that side of them. They don't want to let people know that they have anger or even maybe if they have anger issues, quote unquote. And so uh, that's why I wanted to talk about it, because this is the time, we are at the time in our life, at the time in consciousness, where we are learning to be more and more authentic, we are learning to be more and more um, true to what's going on, and we're learning to honor all sides of who we are, all sides of uh, you know, as Clint Eastwood said, the good, the bad, and the ugly, even though we know it's all God. It's all God. And so that when we know that, that helps us embrace these, you know, dark sides, if you will. But, you know, we have the, we talk about the dark side, and then we talk about the light side. And I want to make sure that we're not talking about duality. Okay, we're not talking about duality here. We're talking about a non-dual God in which everything resides within and which everything resides within it. Like every God is everywhere present and everything has God within it. So when we are talking about anger, we're talking about God. So let's just make that very clear, okay? So, um, and why this is a really great topic is because we, you wouldn't be here listening to this recording if you did not step up to the plate in your spiritual practice. Like you've said, yes, I want to be responsible for my life. I want to co-create with spirit my life. I want to make a difference in this world because that's what Centers for Spiritual Living is all about. And so, um, and we'll start with the quote from Luke 12, uh, 48, where he says, for those to whom much is given, much is required. We were built for this moment in time. There's no coincidence that we landed on this earth during this time, during this time of COVID, during this time of war. There is no uh, uh, mistake that we are here in consciousness right now in this moment because much is given. to For those who much is given, much is required. So we're going to look at this side of us that maybe we haven't wanted to look at and honor it and honor it and bless it and thank our um, anger 
for the gifts because it has brought us gifts, maybe in hindsight, but it has brought us gifts. And, you know, today the, the code word for anger is triggered. You know, I'm triggered. It's not I'm angry. Uh, it's, it's I am triggered. That's all fine. But when we think about triggered, it, we can also think of it as opportunity. You know, it's an opportunity to show us the areas in our life where we need to grow, where we need to grow. And so when you think about um, when we have these opportunities, these trigger opportunities, we, we return to that uh, past life, if you will, a past, a past part of our life where something seems like it was wrong. Something was wrong. And so when we perceive, because we're mammals on this earth, when we perceive that something's wrong, we immediately go into fight or flight when something's wrong because we need to protect ourselves or protect somebody from something perceived or real. And so, um, so when we are in that fight or flight, we can't, we're not thinking straight. We're not ourselves. And a lot of times when it's going unmanned, this fight or flight response is unmanned. It looks and can feel and express itself as anger because we are in fear. Sometimes we're not even, when we're angry, we really have to stop and take a look. Is this anger or is this fear? Is this anger or is this shame? We have to take a look and give words to what this truly is. And so that gives us that opportunity to, you know, to pause, to pause. And, and because um, that pause is so important, let's go to the first slide by Stephen Covey, where he says, between the stimulus and the response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Amen to that. Thank you, Stephen Covey. Yes, because that space is the God space. It's the space of choice. And we can't always get there when we're super angry like rage, right? We don't have that capacity to access that space, that God space. But if we can get there before we get to that super angry spot, we can have a place of choice and choose our response or choose differently or choose to go for a walk so that we don't create damage in our relationships or whoever uh, we're angry with or at. And so that space, I call it the God space. And the more I meditate and the more I do yoga, the more I have access to that space that Stephen Covey is talking about. And that in, in there lies our growth and our freedom. And that freedom is for the constraints of our emotions that sometimes we don't, doesn't seem like we have control over, right? So that let's just honor that space and look for it when we are triggered, when something, when we feel our body starting to constrict, that's red flag, number one, we feel our body starting to constrict. And so there we take that breath, that holy breath that brings us to this now moment where we can choose again. We can choose again. And that's what it's all about. Taking, the, finding the present moment, the God moment where everything is possible and that we don't have to act that way anymore. We don't have to be that way anymore. We might have had anger in the past, but we don't have to do it today in this moment. Okay. So yes, let's take that holy breath right now. And, and then another opportunity that I know have and have seen and have experienced in the past up until this moment is that blame, blame. I have seen people go into such anger and rage and when they blame somebody else for a circumstance in their life. Now, I know y'all, you all are science of minders, right? We don't do this. We don't do that. We are way too spiritual for this, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> 
So when we notice that we're in blame, this is another opportunity for us to see where we can grow. Where can we grow? Where can we move beyond blaming others? If we go to slide number two, there's a really great um, Greek proverb in slide number two. This um, Greek proverb says, to blame others for your misfortune shows that you need education. To blame yourself shows your education has begun. And to blame no one shows that your education is complete. When we can get to that point, when we recognize in consciousness that it is all God and that there is a mystery beyond our understanding about what happens in this world and what happens in our life, for that matter, that we can start to um, surrender that there's a power much greater than ourselves that is in charge, that has that we have no idea. We have no idea what the great plan is. And so when we can take um, the attention and, 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 you know, not point it at others and not even point it at ourselves for the mistakes that we have made. Wow. To forgive ourselves for the mistakes that we have made so that we blame no one. And that is, again, setting ourselves free, setting ourselves free from that blame energy that can, tr can trigger us or lead us into anger. Yes, yes. So uh, let's take another deep breath in. I'm just going to move my, there we go. And so what do the scriptures say about anger? What do the scriptures say? And so the Talmud tells us that we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. Let me say that again. We don't see things as they are. We see them as we are. Hmm. Love that. The Quran tells us if one of you becomes angry, then he or she should stay silent. In other words, when you feel that anger in you, more than likely you will if start to cause damage outside of yourself by speaking or however you choose to express it. So that's when I say, I, I, I'm interpreting that as it's time to go for a walk. <laughs> it's time to meditate. It's time to do some yoga. And I'm just going to stay silent right now. Ernest Holmes tells us that anger, malice, and vindictiveness and kindred emotions like that are but subtle forms of fear. Yes, Ernest, I believe that. Anger is a subtle form of fear. So that's where we really need to stop and look, what am I afraid of? Because, you know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't get angry. I'm not saying that it's not okay to get angry. It's, it's natural. It's a natural um, emotion, just like it is to uh, be happy, to be sad. It's, it's in the palette of human emotions. So by no means am I saying don't be angry. What I'm saying is to be aware of your anger, because even Jesus was anger, angry. When he chased the money changers out of the temple, there's stories of him. He's angry and he was turning over tables uh, because they were exchanging money in the house of prayer. He did not like that. So it's, it's definitely not, uh, I'm not saying to suppress it. I'm saying we need to learn to be angry consciously and love that part of us that gets angry. Love it. Love that part of us that's triggered. Love the trigger. Love it all. Because why? Because it's all God. That's all God. All God. Yes. And in slide number three, um, Thich Nhat Hanh tells us in his book um, called Anger, which I love this book. If someone sets your house on fire, would you chase that person who you think started the fire? Or would you tend to your house and put out the fire? That's what, it, that's what we're talking about, blame. So, you, so if we're over here being angry at this person, but you're the one who's full of fire inside, full of anger, full of rage, blaming that other person, would you chase that person while you're on fire? What's well, going to happen? Your fire's going to grow, right? So instead, tend to your house and put out your own fire. 
we, we know we can't do anything about others and their actions. The only thing we have control of somewhat is ourselves and our thoughts. So tend to your own house, put out your own fire, find a way to do that. Find something that distracts you out of it. Go within and find out what caused it. What, what really was the cause? What really was, was the source of it all? Just so that we can heal all of that. So um, additionally, anger changes your perception of the, when you're angry, you are not seeing straight. You are not, we are not seeing with the eyes of God. So that's why it's uh, important to take that pause because what you're seeing might not be really what's occurring and then you're misinterpreting. So that's a good time to pause and step away. Pause and step away so that you can get clear because it's like you're put on a pair of glasses and you're seeing everything. You're seeing everything differently because you have so much of that energy running through you. You know, they call that blind rage. You've heard of that where people have done terrible things in a blind rage. It's because they can't see. They're not seeing with the eyes of God and they ha don't have the tools to stop themselves before it's gone too far. And so what if someone's being angry with you? What do you do with it? You know, what do you do with it? I remember this Buddhist story that talks about, um, you know, if someone knocks on your door and wants to give you a gift and you look at the gift and maybe it's anger, so it says anger on it, you know, that's not your gift unless you reach out and take the gift from the person. So if someone's giving you anger, you do not have to receive it. You can say, thank you so much. I do not accept. You could say it with loving kindness because you're, when we come from a place of understanding, right? Because we've all been there. We've all had our anger times. So when we come from a place of understanding, like, oh, that person is blind right now. That person is experiencing some uh, uh, not seeing with the eyes of God. So I'm going to have some compassion and I'm not going to accept that gift. And you lovingly walk away, step away, thank them, um, bless them, ask them how you could help them. Because, you know, forgiveness is such a beautiful tool that helps everyone, including yourself. And I love this. In Luke 23, 34, it says, forgive them for they know not what they do. And we often interpret that, um, forgive them because they're unconscious, forgive them because they were in a blind rage. But how about if we turn that around a little bit and say, Forgive them for they know not what they do to themselves, to themselves. Because when we are suffering inside, we are so miserable. We are so unhappy. We are just suffering. Those who are angry all the time, living in just, just cycle after cycle of anger. Forgive them for they know not what they do to themselves within and in their body, what that anger is doing and in their consciousness and the empathy that they cannot see with the eyes of God. They cannot see the freedom, the peace and the joy that's available to them because they are stuck in that vicious cycle of anger. So when you hear that, forgive them for they know not what they do. They know not what they are doing to themselves. And what a, um, oh, I feel like a sadness um, that their view of the world, you know, is filled with anger. And so we bless them. We bless them. So when we listen to another's feelings and we listen to them, um, we, we, we practice empathy. And empathy is the antidote when someone is angry with you. It's really, it's a, it's a muscle to build. But, you know, I, I was watching one of Brene Brown's um, series, and she talked about empathetic listening. And it's when you're listening from a place of uh, where you're present to the person and you're not judging them, like if they're having anger, you know, I've had times when I, when I see somebody in anger, like, oh, there they go again, or what are they so angry about, or that's nothing to get angry over, and all those judgmental thoughts that I've had um, in the past, up until this moment, and um, 
empathetic listening is listening. You're fully present with the person non-judgmentally so they can say anything to you and you're listening to them without judgment. And here's the catch. You believe them. You believe them. What they're saying to you is true for them. And so you believe them and that creates an empathetic listening place. Not believe them like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like that. <laughs> like really like this is their experience. This is their experience. And it's probably bought on from some trauma in the past, or maybe their spiritual practices haven't been happening, but this is true for them. How would you like to be listened to like that? For me, that's like we're being listened to by the ears of God and the heart of God, because God doesn't judge us, you know? So if we can listen with the ears of God and the heart of God, we can practice empathetic listening. And what that does is it neutralizes the person's emotional state, whether anger, upset of any sort. It just neutralizes it. So, and they, it softens because I don't know if you've been listened to in that way, but boy, it, you, you don't know what to do. You're just like, ah, oh, you just melt because someone's actually listened to you. It's a beautiful thing. I really encourage all of us to practice empathetic listening. Yes. Let's take a breath right here. And just know one of my favorite um, affirmations when I get angry, one of my favorite ones is I remember that I live in a friendly, trustworthy, supportive universe. And I remember that life is on my side. Life is on my side, cheering me on. So when I'm in that angry space, I just remember, have to remember that life is on my side at all times working for my good. And I accept that. And what that does is that helps me to dissolve and neutralize that anger energy that resides within me. I honor my anger. I, I, I believe that my anger always has something to teach me so that I can grow and grow into an even more and more aware, conscious being on this earth. I can have empathy for those when they are angry. And I just honor that emotion that without it, how could we, I mean, anger brings so much good to us too. Like it helps us protect our family, our children, you know, when, when um, it helps us show what our values are, when we're angry, it's because something that we think is not right is happening. So that shows to us what we value. So there's, good things about anger. If you play sports at all, you get that inner anger energy, you filter it into your sports or other activities. So, so we're, we're just going to honor it and appreciate what it brings to us, to our life. And I want to close my talk today because I, I know that um, anger has separated a lot of um, this country with people with different beliefs. And, and I just want to close with something that can unite us. When we have anger, it doesn't have to separate us. We can honor our anger and honor and and honor the anger of another. We can honor our beliefs and honor the beliefs of another. That's going to create a world that works for everyone. That works for everyone because there's room in this world for it all. Yes, indeed. And if we go to the last slide, I love this quote. It's from the it's the final lines in the movie Black Panther. And we all know the truth that more connects us than divides us. But in times of crisis, the wise build bridges while the foolish build barriers. We must find a way to look after one another as if we were one single tribe. And we are, we are one single tribe. Let us build bridges instead of barriers. Let us bring people together rather than separate. We can hold a um, contradictory belief at the same time as holding our own and honoring both. This is how we build bridges. We can empathetically listen to those who are when they are angry because we know and recognize that we have that anger within us as well.
And so I invite you to do all of these practices and be a, be a bridge builder in this world. Thank you so much. I appreciate this opportunity. I'm just going to go into prayer and close with a prayer. Right here and right now in this holy moment, Mm, knowing and accepting that there is only one presence, there is only one God, one spirit that resides within each and every one of us right here, right now, in this moment, as divine expressions. Each unique divine expression has a unique and divine perspective, has a unique and divine emotional journey to go on. And we know that it is all God. It can only be all God because God is all there is. Yes. And so we bless this moment of recognition, of recognizing the God within us, within each and every emotion, within each and every breath. I know this to be so. And I also have a prayer for anyone who woke up this morning suffering in any way. I send this prayer, blanketing you with the love, the peace, and the Holy Spirit right here and right now, blanketing you, wrapping the arms of God around you in nurturing, compassionate love. So thank you, thank you, beloveds, for this time together. I declare it to be holy right here and right now, as we all say together, and so it is. Amen, and thank you. Here at Center for Spirits Living Greater Las Vegas, we are a mission and vision driven community. We offer transformative educational opportunities, deep and meaningful moments of connection, uplifting Wednesday and Sunday services. We greatly appreciate your contributions that support the amazing work we're doing here in Southern Nevada. We have several easy ways you can contribute. We have text to give. Simply text the amount of your donation to our text to give number and you'll be prompted to enter your information. There's a link to our online donation page posted below this video where you can contribute by debit or credit card. And of course, you're always welcome to send a check to our office if that works better for you. All of your contributions go to support the great work that we're doing here in Greater Las Vegas community. So we're going to do a tune-up today. This is a, a good song to do it with. And I want you to repeat after me in just a moment. What do I want and what do I desire? What will bring me to my highest good? What do I want and what do I desire? And what will bring me to my highest good? Prosperity, you sing. Prosperity. I claim it. I claim it. Abundance, Abundance is mine. Is mine. Love. Love flows through me. Flows through me. I, feel I feel joy all the time. Here all we go. I can have it. I can have it. I deserve it. I deserve it. I claim it. I claim it. It is mine. It is mine. I can have it. I can have it. I deserve it. I deserve it. I am it. I am it. It is mine. It is mine. Now peace, peace fills my heart. Fills my heart. I surrender. Is my, is my birthright. Passion, Passion helps, me helps me sing. I can have it. I, can have it. I deserve it. I, deserve it. I, claim it. I claim it. It is mine. It is mine. I, can have it. I can have it. I deserve it. I, deserve it. I am it. I am it's, it. my time. it's my time. Okay, now close your eyes, take a deep breath, and think about what you want to manifest in your life. What do you need to tune up and claim for yourself? You say these three lines after me. Anything I want, anything I desire, anything that brings me to my highest good. Anything I want, anything I desire, anything that brings me to my highest good. I release, I release and let go. What is mine? What is mine? I can have. I can have what I want. What I want. And let spirit, and let spirit direct, the flow. direct the flow. Life is good. Life is good. Life is fun. Life is fun. Life is great. Life is great. The song is done. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. You always inspire and uplift us with your talent. 
and thank you for your generous gift in support of our Center. We remain committed to serving you. Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas continues to provide enriching services, transformative classes, and powerful opportunities for connection within our community. Be sure to watch the announcements at the end of today's service for what's coming up in the weeks ahead. Now let's join together in a closing song before our benediction. So spirit on earth and who you are and all you do is a blessing to the world. I am the heart, I am the hands, I am the voice of spirit on earth and who I am. our service to a close this Sunday morning. I'd like to take this opportunity to once again thank Reverend Veronica for being here with us today. We really appreciate you taking this opportunity to join us on this early Sunday morning and bring us such an inspirational message. And I want to remind everyone in our community about our Sunrise New Building Blessing. I announced this last week at our in-person service. This special blessing ceremony is going to be held in a parking lot of our new space on Sunday, June 19th at 8 a.m. I know it's a little earlier, but it's a sunrise service, the dawn of a new thing, the dawn of a new day, the dawn of a new endeavor, the dawn of the new Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. Remember, the address is 4080 East Russell Road. Now, I know we have some members in our community who don't regularly watch our online services. So please, if you know any of these folks, spread the word to them about um, this wonderful service that we're going to have. And remind everyone to please take an opportunity to come and join us. We have some special, special rituals that we're going to do. And I've invited some of the other ministers from the area to join us in uh, blessing our building. And of course, remember, if you have a lawn chair or a folding chair, bring that with you. We have about two dozen that we're going to be setting up, but we can always use a few extra. So if you have your own, please bring it. I also want to remind you that we have our newly revised visioning class starting on June 9th. This class will be offered on Zoom for six Tuesday nights starting at 6 p.m. We're in the process of revitalizing our vision core. And in order for someone to serve on the vision core, you must have taken the visioning class. So please check out our website and eblast for inf more information about this course. And of course, you can find the information about our Sunrise New Building Blessing on there as well. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Enjoy this amazing summer weather that we have here in the Valley. And I hope to see you all in person on June 19th. Have a great week. monthly publication, Science of Mind magazine, is a treasure to be read and contemplated. Along with in-depth articles, there is a day-to-day -day spiritual support to be gleaned from its daily guides. Licensed practitioner Lynn Frankenberger hosts Adventures in Faith every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on Zoom, and you're invited to join in. This is a weekly group discussion that focuses on those daily guides and how to apply them. Check Facebook and our weekly newsletter for more details.
KCSL Greater Las Vegas brings you much of your favorite spiritual music every Friday at 7 p.m. with Spiritual Soundscapes. Enjoy performances from CSL GLV vocalists along with special guest singers. It's music for your soul. Subscribe to the CSL GLV YouTube channel to get a convenient link sent to you for each musical performance. At CSL Greater Las Vegas, it is our mission to inspire spiritual discovery through community connection, exploration, and celebration. This mission supports the all-inclusive vision of Centers for Spiritual Living worldwide in which we envision a world that works for everyone and all of creation.